With all the theory background covered in the previous videos, this will be our first hands-on video and in this we will be interfacing a light emitting diode to the 80 mega 32 AVR microcontroller. Now a LED is basically a little light emitting diode uh, which you know in the power top it emits light and it is available in various colors, various sizes and you can do a lot of fancy stuff with LEDs. And we also be discussing some interesting uh, projects like the persistence, persistence of vision, light painting and all that with the LEDs later in this series. Now let us go ahead and uh, check how we could interface a single light emitting diode. Now if you look at an LED closely what you would find is one leg or one LED of the LED is uh, taller than the other and the taller leg it's called the anode or the positive. So this is the symbol and this side is called the anode and there is one more LED which is shorter and it's called the cathode. So, uh, so when you power it up the positive terminal from the battery should go to the positive this and negative to the negative this and also if you look at the enclosure of the LED what you would find is there is a notch on one of the sides and if if you break the leads uh, by chance uh, you know with the help of the notch you could find out which is positive and which is negative. Now before we go ahead and uh, you know actually interface or look at the schematic of how to interface an LED with a microcontroller, let us look at you know the pin diagram of the microcontroller because while discussing the architecture, we're not seen how the microcontroller looks or what pins it has on it. So let us go ahead and check that. Now uh, this is how the controller looks. So it has uh, 20 pins on both the sides and if these are arranged logically so physically the numbers are from 1 to 20 and you know 21 to 40 so this is how the numbers are but to make more sense so this is number 1 this is number 20 this is 21 and this is pin 40 so this is a 40 pin uh, dual in line package which fits on the board so these uh, this is how the numbers are physically but if you want to make sense of what pins it has it is you know it is sometimes helpful to arrange them in a logical way now what you could see in this diagram is uh, the pins the pins 1 to 8 and they have names from pb0 to pb7 so this is called the port b and the port b has 8 pins similarly we have port a port c and port d each are of 8 pins and apart from that what you could see is uh, each of the port pin or each of the pin that the controller has also has an al alternate name as shown here so this has i mean the all the four ports they could be used for digital outputs and inputs by digital output and inputs what we mean is each of the individual ports or even the port pins can be used to send or receive one or zero so uh, so that is what we mean by digital input output and remember it not that the entire port you could also use the individual pins of the port now apart from that what you have is there are alternate pin functions that the port can be used for so they could be SPI I2C uh, analog to digital converter all the uh, sections that we saw in the first video so now all these uh, ports have multiple functions and in this video we're going to focus on the digital inputs and outputs now this IC has four ports uh, so uh, the ports that we have on this IC are port A, B, C and D and uh, in order to use any of these ports there are three resistors that are important and we have seen in this uh, in the previous video these three resistors are special function resistors and so we have uh, we have 
64 of them uh, on on the uh, 80 mega 32 and uh, each port has three such resistors to control its uh, operation and these three resistors are called the data direction resistor data direction resistor and each of the port has it so data direction resistor it is also called I mean so the, the resistor the name the actual name of the resistor is DDR and this is for all the three or all the four ports DDR A uh, DDR B DDR C and DDR D so uh, these four resistor controls control the uh, data direction for the microcontroller now how that does is so how we set a direction for a particular pin is say for instance port B so the data direction register for port B is called the DDRB now each of the register is 8 bit in size so all of these four are 8 bits in size or a 1 byte resistor now each of the bit corresponds to a physical pin on the microcontroller so this this bit 0 this corresponds to port B0 which is pin number let's look at the pin number in the microcontroller so this is pin number 1 and this is pin number 8 so this is actually the pin number 1 on the microcontroller and this is pin number 8 so so if we want to set the port B0 as output what we should write here on this DDRB resistor is uh, 1 so if you write a 1 this pin becomes output so if we write a 0 as you should have guessed the, the pin becomes input so in this case 0 is input and 1 is output so this is a function of the data direction resistor so similarly the next resistor is the actual resistor that you send the data on so say for instance port B now say if you have an LED connected to one of the pins of port B then sending 1 or 0 to the resistor called port B will send 1 or 0 to the actual pin that you have so similarly port B is again 8 bit resistor and it corresponds to physical pins uh, one, 1 to 8 on the microcontroller and the next resistor it's called the pin resistor and this resistor the port B resistor as we know that you know this is used to send outputs from the microcontroller to the external devices so what the pin B resistor is used is to take inputs from an external device say we have connected switch to one of the pins of port B in that case to read the status of the pin or the switch we would be using the resistor called the pin B so this is used for input so to brush it up so the uh, the DDR resistor is used to set the direction the port resistor is used to send outputs from the microcontroller to the external device the pin B resistor is used to take inputs from the uh, you know from from an external device or read the pin status of the microcontroller okay now let us go back and look at what are the minimum connections required to get this uh, get the controller or the IC working so the first criteria is I mean the first requirement is to uh, provide power to the VCC and the ground pins so this should be connected to 5 volts and and the ground pin should be connected to ground so this should be connected to ground and 
So similarly, for now we will assume that even the VVCC pin AVCC or the analog uh, voltage uh, for the pin is 5 volts and the analog ground is connected to the same ground. And even uh, let us assume that the analog reference is 5 volts. Now what else apart from this is required? I mean this powers of the controller but there is one more basic thing that is required. So the the reset pin that we have here it is inverted so what that means is if the pin is zero the controller resets so when the controller resets what happens is uh, it starts executing instructions from the first location in the program memory so we'll discuss more of that a little later so if you want the controller to be working normally it should be one so in order to have one on this particular pin what is usually done is this pin is connected through a pull-up resistor to VCC so the resistor the reset pin that we have here is connected With a, with, with a pull up resistor to VCC and what is also done is you have a switch between this pin and ground so whenever you want to reset or you know start the code right from the beginning uh, there is also a tactile or a uh, tactile or a switch with tactile switch which you if you press and leave it then the controller starts executing from the first because the controller gets a zero and it resets so this is these are the bare minimum connections that you require for the controller to get working but uh, it would work only if it has some program inside and to load pro a program into microcontroller and we have seen this before it requires these six pins i mean these four pins and this protocol is called the spi and it uses this four pins and when, when we discuss the uh, SPI protocol we will see the function of these four pins so uh, you, you should have seen a 5 cross uh, 2 header on a board or you could connect these uh, with whatever program you are using and you could program the chip but basically these are the connections that are required to get started And apart from all this, what you typically see on a on a on a microcontroller like this is a crystal connected. So there is an inbuilt crystal uh, which is which runs up to eight megahertz, but uh, the controller can work well till twenty megahertz. And what we have on on the development boards that we sell is a twenty megahertz crystal. So uh, so uh, so in all of the uh, circuits or examples from now we'll be having a crystal oscillator so this is so a simple crystal oscillator connected with a capacitor to ground so this is 16 megahertz oscillator so this is the typical or basic circuit you'll have on a microcontroller now let us go ahead and uh, see how we could interface an LED now to this particular board. Now, if you go ahead and look at the uh, schematic here, so this is how what it has. So it has a reset circuit here. There's a uh, there's a connector to give power to this board, and then you have this oscillator. And instead of one, there are eight LEDs connected to port C. So we could as well connect them to any other port so what we do here is we'll turn them on and turn them off after uh, one second so uh, and and what you could see here is so you have a 470 ohm resistor so uh, LED typically will have a limiting current of about 20 milliampere and uh, since the power supply is 5 volts or each uh, port gives an output of 5 volts the resistance uh, should be 5 volts divided by so this should be the resistance so this is 5 into 20 into 10 power of 3 if we take this milli on top so this is 
वन बाय टू सॉरी दिस इज फोर सो दिस वुड बी वन थाउजेंड डिवाइड बाय फोर व्हिच इज टू फिफ्टी ओम्स सो दिस इज द मैक्सिमम रेजिस्टेंस दैट द द मिनिमम रेजिस्टेंस दैट यू कैन पुट सो इफ यू अलाउ करंट व्हिच इज मोर देन ट्वेंटी मिली एमपीएस दी एलईडी वुड बर्न ऑफ सो वी टिपिकली यूज फोर सेवेंटी ओम रेजिस्टर व्हिच सप्लाइज approximately 10 milliampere of current to the led which is fair enough now so th- that's why we have a current limiting resistor on each of the leds now uh, so this is the basic simple circuit that you need so instead of 8 you could connect one led as well now let us go ahead and write the code for this particular thing now if i bring up All right, so let us go ahead and uh, write the code to blink uh, a few LEDs. So I will be demonstrating this on the starter AVR board, and so the board has. If you look at the schematic, so if the board has uh, three LEDs, so RXT, TXT, and BL. So these are uh, three LEDs that that we have on the board. So the labels mean that. you know these pins are connected to the leds so if we transmit a 1 to any of these pins uh, the led will turn on and if you transmit a 0 the led will turn off now rather than finding out what pin has which led will turn on and off the entire port d so we have port d here now as we discuss so before we go ahead and uh, send 1 or 0 to the port we should set the direction for the port and ddr d in this case is output and to make it output all the pins will be one now for all the while what we will do is i mean while one so the, the loop will keep executing between this all the time uh, whenever the controller is turned off so what we'll do is we'll, we'll send ones first on the on the port so this is port d and we have zero x ff so this will turn on all the leds uh, we just have three on the board so and then we will wait for a second so uh, this this function uh, it's a delay function it's a inbuilt uh, library so you just need to include the library for that and the library is include util forward slash delay dot h so uh, this library basically generates you know the several functions so it, this function generates delays in milliseconds so the input should be how many milliseconds we need so this is about uh, this 1000 milliseconds which makes 1 second so similarly we will go ahead and turn off the leds we will send 0 0 in this case and then again we need to wait because if we do do not put the delay here uh, it will work so fast that it will not be knowing uh, the speed now uh, after we have done this we need to build the code and so the, the code builds here and you would see the size of the hex file so on so yes yeah, so the f- it has taken just 158 bytes of program memory uh, just 5% of 32 kilobytes now um, if you remember uh, we what we had done is we had set the cpu frequency uh, in the first video and we set up the tool as 16 megahertz so just remember this have this on the back of mind we'll come back to it so it's a very important point related to it now what that means is uh, the the delay f- the delay function uses 16 megahertz as base so it it uses 16 megahertz to uh, generate a delay of 1 second and if we do not give that option in the compiler so it does not know at what frequency the actual controller is running also uh, we'll just look at the hardware and we'll tell you more about it now once you do this uh, the hex file is generated and it will be stored in the place where the project is created now so it would be in the debug folder and you could see the time updated here so this is the hex file that is created now we'll go ahead and flash this hex file 
and uh, to do that we will be using you can use any of the softwares and actually there are two ways uh, to you know transfer the hex file to the microcontroller now the first uh, way would be to uh, use the ISP programmer and we'll be doing that uh, right now so I have right now here is this is the 80 mega 32 um, IC that we will be using throughout this tutorial series so you can see that this is a 40 pin dual inline package so you could take this and fix it on a breadboard and use it or you know you could use a development board of this type so I have this start area development board so it's pretty simple development board what it has is uh, you can fit the IC here and then uh, all the pins are taken out so all the pins are taken out and then you could see a 5 cross 2 connector here so this connector this is the ISP connector that you have on the board now you, you can use this to program the microcontroller this is one way and to do that you need an external programmer like this so the programmer also has an ISP connector and you just need to plug that in and also uh, I have one more board here, so this does not have a bootload, so uh, it needs an uh, external programmer to program it. I have one more board in the same version, so this controller has a bootloader inside it, so I can program it with the USB uh, board that I have here. So uh, you could uh, you could go ahead and do with whatever you have, and this programmer it's uh, it's an open source. Uh, programmer it's USB is called the USB ASP so we'll first look at how to program it using the USB ASP so uh, it's pretty simple you just need to plug this thing in and then the other side you need to connect it to the USB so I have a USB cable here just like that and then So uh, the programmer you have the red LED turned down, so this means it's powered up. So whenever it's programming or transferring the flash from the computer to the board, uh, this LED will be turned on. So this is pretty LED on the board. Now let us go ahead and transfer the hex file. Now before uh, we go ahead and uh, transfer the hex file, there's something that I would like to show you. So uh, the, the IC that comes by default it, it is uh, the crystal on it it's not uh, fixed to 16 megahertz so when the controller is shipped it just uh, it just has one megahertz uh, by default the internal oscillator uh, it's set to one megahertz so if you are uh, taking a, a new ic a brand new ic like this you need to set it up to an XML crystal if you're using an XML crystal. And to do that, you need to change a fuse bits. Now, we'll see how we can change the fuse bits here. Okay, so, so if you read uh, the fuse bits, so this is one of the programmers you could use, and there are lots of programmers that support USB ASP, so you can use any of that. And you could see that the uh, by default, uh, the internal uh, oscillator is selected so you need to change it to external oscillator and we'll selecting the last option which has 64 milliseconds of startup time so I'll just flash that and you should be very careful when you're dealing with fuse bits because they could burn your IC so I'll write it off yeah, so this is fixed so now our controller will be working on 16 megahertz and what I could do is I could browse the hex file so it is here it is here in this folder I'll just browse it and that's it so this icon it will transfer uh, the hex file to the flash of the memory so if I do that the flash will be transferred 
So uh, this opens it and then uh, this is to browse the file actually and this is to transfer it. Uh, you can see the icon so the hex file goes to the chip. So if I do that and what you could see for a brief period of the programmer is the green light was turned on and the code is transferred. Now uh, these three LEDs are on port D and these are uh, you know blinking. So uh, this is a delay of one second will they blink. Now let's go ahead and quickly uh, do one more thing here which we have discussed earlier. So instead of turning on all the LEDs, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and turn on only one of the LED which is BL and the BL LED is connected to port D4. So what we'll do is uh, instead of doing this, I will turn on only one LED. So what I'll do is port D or equals one. I shifted four times. So this is the fourth LED on the port, which is port D4. Okay. Similarly, I will tu turn off the uh, only that particular LED. So and equals inverted of one shifted four times and now this time uh, the other LEDs should stay in whatever position they are again to um, uh, build the uh, code is click on build or click on F7 and then okay so once the code is built uh, what you do is we'll go ahead and flash it so we need not browse it again now what you could see observe on the board here is so only this particular LED is blinking so what that means is we are able to set and clear particular bits of a board now you could also see the demonstration on the ultra AVR development board which is one more board from Explore Embedded Alright, so let us also go ahead and try and transfer the hex file with the help of a bootloader. So now I'll demonstrate how we can use the bootloader to transfer the hex file. Now, uh, so okay, so so the way bootloader works is it's it's a Alright, so, uh, so the way bootloader works is uh, we need to first flash the bootloader into the controller first and then uh, you could use the USB port like this uh, to program and program the controller. Now what you see here is the LED which is marked as BL in the schematic is the bootloader LED so it indicates uh, in the bootloader mode and then you have a couple of couple more LEDs here. So whenever I plug in this port, so what you could find is this LED blinks. So it means that uh, the code that is running right now is in bootloader mode. And uh, so when it is in bootloader mode, you know, it, it waits for commands from the serial port. And if it receives commands to flash the hex file of this, uh, flash, uh, flash the, uh, I mean, uh, burn the flash of this controller if it gets that those commands then it will go ahead and accept those and flash flash it internally so let us go ahead and uh, try this so so uh, now what would you have here is so this is one more software so uh, select the I mean the programmer is Arduino so because you're using Arduino bootloader and select the COM port as it gets detected now uh, you can check that or verify that from the device manager. So, okay, so uh, here we have so it's COM2, and you can select that and select the baud rate as 19200, and then you could hit on detect the board. So it detects the microcontroller as 80 mega 32 and in the same way you could go ahead and uh, you know browse the hex file uh, that is here so you could do that or simply you could drag and drop the hex file so 
this is the LED blinking code that is here on the board. Now, uh, if you hit go, it uses AVR uh, dude inside and it flashes it. So, and there we have the board. So, we have the LED blinking. Thank you for watching.